I'm reaching a state now. Listen to this. I've amazed myself that even people who've disappointed me and hurt me or harmed me or lied to me, I can even help them back. Give them advice, give them money, give them things that they need. I can even give these things back to them and not expect anything back. I can do that now. See, it's not the same as giving food to the homeless because our group has the honor to give food to the homeless in Kuala Lumpur. We do that every Saturday. It's not the same as giving to the homeless. Homeless are neutral. Giving help to people that have hurt you, or you think they have hurt you, is very profound practice. And I'm trying to do that profound practice. Why, if I'm doing my sadhanas, if I'm doing my mantras, if I'm doing my studies and meditations, that must be the result, right? The result must be, I can do that. What other result do we want from meditation? What other result do we want from, from doing soak and offerings? That we know the mudras well, we sit in puja. <laughs> oh, nice mudra. Oh, oops, I'm in tok. What, what, what other reason are we in tok to do mudras well? And some of us in tok, some of us in tok, you know, we're actually in deep tantric meditation. <laughs> and some of us in tok, we express our spirituality in. Oh, with some of us in Tokyo, you know, we can ring that Dhamma Rut. I tell you, we can ring it. We practice it at home. We don't care about the meditation. We don't care about bodhicitta. We don't care about love. We don't care about compassion. We don't care about sentient beings. We can ring that Dhamma Rut. So our talk practice is like that, you know, we're in talk, we're doing the ritual, what a teeny little mantra. We're in talk, you know, and we're doing a great job because we practice at home, we practice weeks after weeks so that when everybody's watching us, it's like an opera performance. <laughs> that's very good because that's the result of our practice. Broken. So some of us are very good in talk, and we're like, and then we need to chant this way, or we need to chant that way, and we don't chant that way. We're not allowed to argue doing so, so we argue with our mind. Oh, you just wait till after so. <laughs> you just wait till after so. I'll, I, I'm, oh, oh, oh. And some people are not even that advanced. They don't even practice. They sit there like, when the guy next door is doing it, they're like. Oh, 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 stop. Have you seen them in Tok practice? It's so ridiculous. Tok is not about that. It's about transformation. This is just an expression of it. It's just an expression. So what, what's, what's, what, 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 what's happening is this is, don't hurt yourself anymore. Reward yourself. Don't set yourself up for more emotional problems. These days, through a lot of contemplation and reading, particularly mind training teachings by His Holiness the Dalai Lama has helped me quite a lot. Geshe Langri Tapa, the eight verses of thought transformation has helped me quite a lot. Helped me quite a lot. The eight verses of thought transformation has helped me tremendously. Tremendously. I take refuge in those teachings. Those are my favorite. I'll tell you why, because I've seen my mind change. And I have a lot of reasons to be angry. I didn't have a very good childhood. I didn't have very good step parents, very good inverted commas. I didn't have a very good childhood at all. I had a horrible childhood. I had a horrible upbringing. And I suffered quite a lot as a kid in America, a lot of abuse. I have every reason to be angry. I have every reason to, get, to be justified. And if I talk to any counselors, anybody, anywhere, most people say, yeah, poor thing. We understand why you're so angry. Sir. But I've stopped doing that. I'll tell you why. It comes back once in a while because I hurt people that I like. I hurt people that help. And I hurt a lot of people who have a lot of potential and I cut their potential off. So these days, my particular practice is that people who I feel, and that's subjective, have disappointed me. I go out of my way to help them. I go out of my way to assist them, and I give them things, and I give them help. And sometimes it's quite hard, but I do it. Do you know why I do it? 
I'm not concerned whether I look good to you guys or not. I'm worried about myself. And I don't like this kind of mind that I have. And because of the Buddha's teachings, I recognize that I have that type of mind. And I recognize that that mind can change because I saw change in me. Definitely. You think, but you're a Tuku, you're a Rimji. Yeah, I am. I am. If I say I'm not, I'm putting my gurus down and Gandhin down and, and the oracles and the high lamas and his holiness. I'm putting them down because they recognize me. They acknowledge me. I can't put them down, so I can't stop running around saying, well, I'm not. Although I have doubts, but anyways, I dare not, right? But there are different levels of Tukuls. Some of you in here might be Tukuls too, just unrecognized. My point is Tuku or no Tuku is not the point. The point is I'm not enlightened. So there's many steps to go. So that's my particular practice at this time. When others out of jealousy disappoint me with uh, when others out of jealousy treat me with abuse, slander, and so on, may I suffer the defeat and offer the victory to others. When one whom I have placed great hope in unreasonably hurts me very badly, may I view him as my supreme teacher. It is not just words. I really, really try to apply in my life. It's not easy. But it, you know what? It's harder if I don't. I've come to that realization. It's not easy, but it's harder if I don't. So my guru devotion to my teachers is expressed in this way. I'm not able right now, because I'm here, to sit at their feet and wash them and massage them and cut their toenails and wash their clothes and sweep and all that. I did that for many years in the past. And to serve them food and to build their houses, I've done that too. I've actually gotten the mud and, and done building for their houses. I'm not able to do that, but what I'm able to do by serving my guru and my devotion to them is expressed in attacking this might daily, attacking this mind. So people ask, how can we be devoted to our lamas? How? By attacking your angry mind and by attacking your mind that doesn't want to apply effort. That's how you become devoted to your lama. And so when you do that, you find your own lama in your own heart, in your own mind. Why is that? Because our real nature is kindness. Our real nature is effort. Our real nature is clarity. So therefore, if you devote yourself to your outer lama, you find your inner lama. How do you do that? A tyrant, monster, scary, abusive, fake lama will expect physical service and will not do anything except for that and will only want physical service or care and being taken care of. A real lama, a real guru, would want you to find your own guru in you. And they will continuously give gifts, help, talk, advice, teach, scold, to help you find your own guru. How do you know if a guru is real or not? You check what they're focused on. You check what upsets them. If you didn't give them money, are they upset and they throw a BF? Or you broke your commitments. If you broke your commitments and they're very upset, they're a real guru. Then you know their priorities. So therefore, if we have a real guru, what's the purpose of a real guru? Yes, it's wonderful to get teachings for them, and we definitely need to get initiation from them, and we need to get oral transmission from them. We definitely need it, definitely. And that transmission must come from a real guru, from their guru, from their guru. It must be authentic, and they must have done their retreats and fire pujas. They, they have to have. And they keep up their commitments every day. They do their six-session guru yogas. They keep up their vows every day. Then they give you initiation. You need that guru. You definitely need it. There's no enlightenment without a guru. But, but, you don't become a guru addict where everything has to be told, everything has to be given, everything has to be directed. Then that's not it. That's just dependency. We need initiation. We need teachings. We need all that from our guru. But each time we get teachings, each time we get Dharma talks, each time we do practice, each time, each year, we have to see improvement in our mind. That is guru devotion. That is real guru devotion. That is what this beautiful book is talking about. And even for us, some of us are not confirmed Buddhists in this room. It's all right. Because guru devotion, what is guru? A teacher. Someone helps us find a teacher in us. Real guru devotion is not slavishly following some lama. That can be one method to control our mind. Because there are some people at that level, they need to be told in the beginning. But that's not the objective. No. No, 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 no. Forgive all those who have harmed you. Don't wait for death. Don't wait for a fatal disease. 
Don't wait for someone who have died and you have regrets. Don't, don't go to their, don't, don't be like in the Hollywood movies and then go to the cemetery and you're all dressed up and like Madonna, she lays on her mother's coffin and cries and blah, 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 blah. Everybody's filming her. Oh, bad karma, I love her. Forgive everyone. Don't wait for that critical moment. Don't wait. I'll tell you why. You suffer. You habituate yourself. And at that critical moment, can you really let go? Do you really think you can let go at that critical moment? To forgive? To say thank you? Do you think you can let go? Can you let go now? That's what we have to achieve through Buddhist practice, through Buddhist meditation and listening to teachings. Teachings give us a method, gives us different perspective. And we need to return people's kindness. Very important to return people's kindness, to forgive people that have harmed you, and to return the kindness you have received from people who have been kind to you. People who have given you things, helped you, gave you advice, loved you, taken care of you. You must return their kindness. If you cannot physically return their kindness because they have passed away, then you, then you must do it by your actions, by being a supreme human being. 